What's going on guys? I've been an avid OnePlus user for over five years now and I don't want to seem like a spoiled brat, but I've been lucky enough to use a OnePlus phone ever since the release of the OnePlus 3. And every time I've used these flagships, four things have always stood out to me. The performance, charging speed, design, and software. Not so much their cameras or battery life. Those two aspects, for the most part, have always been mediocre. So this year, OnePlus aimed to break that camera trend by partnering up with Hasselblad a Swedish camera company that happened to help NASA back in the 60s to capture pictures and videos for the Apollo 11 moon landing. It's a pretty big partnership, and when I heard that, I got excited for their upcoming OnePlus 9 series because I was thinking to myself, maybe this is the year that OnePlus actually triumphs in the smartphone camera game. A world where Google, Apple, and Samsung always take the cake. So after a month of using the OnePlus 9 Pro, I wanted to give you my overall thoughts on the phone and let you know if OnePlus succeeded in making this the best camera on the market. Now before the phones were released, OnePlus said that they were going to revolutionize the smartphone camera game, and after testing out the rear cameras for over a month, that's not the case. The module on the back follows the same form factor as the one found in the OnePlus 8T, it just has bigger rings for the primary and ultra wide lens. The dual LED flash is combined and there's a Hasselblad logo. You get a 48 megapixel wide lens, a 50 megapixel ultra wide lens with a much bigger sensor size that can also capture macro shots, an 8 megapixel telephoto lens that now has a deeper 3.3x optical zoom, and a 2 megapixel monochrome camera, which I'm not sure why they still include. Either way, this translates to some awesome fantastic pictures. When compared to its predecessor, the colors are now a lot more accurate and natural. Before, I've always felt like OnePlus cameras overprocess most of my shots and then spit out a photo that looked like it had a filter on top. Thankfully, that's no longer the case here, and I think the Hasselblad partnership has a lot to do with that. Sure, there were a few times where the camera would oversaturate or even mute the colors, but for the most part, colors come very close to what my eyes see at night. Those bigger sensors improve the low-light performance, making the photo capture very fast and reliant. No matter the lighting scenario, pictures come out with a ton of detail and were always lit. I did experience a few lens flares and undesired blurry shots even when I tried to keep the camera steady, but it's nothing like its processors. I actually really enjoyed using their new Nightscape Video 2.0 since it even allowed me to capture bright and detailed videos whenever I was in a dark scene. So using the OnePlus 9 Pro when capturing photos or videos at night was a good experience. It does have some bigger imperfections though that mostly have to do with daylight shots. When compared to the Pixel 5, I noticed that the OnePlus 9 would frequently overexpose certain aspects of some shots and lighten up the shadows. For example, in this photo where I was standing in the shade of some trees, the OnePlus 9 Pro made it seem like I wasn't in the shade at all, but instead that the sun was just setting. The Pixel 5 didn't do that and instead allowed the shadows to be so that you can tell that I was in the shade and if you look at the brick wall, you could tell that it was still very sunny outside since the lighting is very dramatic. On top of that, the OnePlus 9 Pro didn't provide as much detail on some objects since they look over smoothened, such as this drawer. It's nothing that will make you hate the camera, but still things to point out. Finally, there were also a few new camera software features that I really love playing around with. The first was the new camera mode called Tilt Shift. It allows you to make big objects within a photo, such as buildings or vehicles, look like small little toys. To be honest, it was a hit or miss situation, but when it did hit, the pictures looked astonishing, providing a different perspective to what you typically see in landscape shots. I also love the snapping sound when capturing any photo. It's extremely satisfying. And when shooting any videos, it was a great pleasure, especially with the, all the improvements made to the software. To top it off, the 9 Pro now supports 8K video recording and 4K video recording at up to 120 FPS. That was fun to play around with. The ultra wide lens can now do a lot more on the software side, such as doing a time lapse, focus tracking, and more. Overall, I was really impressed with the improvements that OnePlus made to the 9 Pro's cameras. It's nothing that's revolutionary or anything that usually leaves me saying, wow, but it's still a solid camera that can capture some fantastic pictures or videos. If I needed it to capture some long lasting memories, I feel really confident that this phone can get the job done. Okay, enough about the cameras. Let's talk about some things that really impressed me. The first one was the design. It was on point. The phone has a nice weight to it and is well balanced for a comfortable hold. Uh, the aluminum sides and back also give it this premium feel. It can be a bit too big though for anyone with small hands since the display is 6.7 inches. Good thing Oxygen OS now tries to make the interface easier to use with one hand by dropping down its menus. 
The side buttons also have great placement and are very tactile. The alert slider came in handy a couple of times when I wanted to silence the phone without taking it out of my pocket. It has a fabulous vibration motor, so whenever you play games or navigate through the UI with touch vibration enabled, it's honestly very satisfying. It's IP68 water resistant, so you can drop this thing into a bucket of water or walk in the rain with it and it'll still work just fine. So a lot of decisions made on the design are excellent. The only thing I wish OnePlus would have changed is the fingerprint sensor's placement. It's a bit too low, even lower than the one found in the OnePlus 8T. You can get used to it, but it's not very ergonomic. It doesn't lock extremely fast though and recognize my fingerprint very well, even better than the OnePlus 8T. As for the looks of the phone, I received the silver morning mist color and even though some people will disagree with me, I love how it looks. It's not too flashy like a colorful Note 10 Plus or too boring like a simple matte color. It's right in the middle where it's satisfying to look at, especially since the silver to black gradient changes under different types of lighting and it looks very professional. Of course, with any glossy glass back though, you're bound to get some fingerprints and oily smudges and it can be a bit slippery to use. So if you like to get rid of those issues or just don't like the morning mist color, I recommend picking up a skin from channel sponsor Dbrand. It'll give the phone a bit more grip, gets rid of any fingerprint smudges, and also makes the phone stand out from the crowd, especially with their new robot camo edition. Uh, these are my absolute favorite textures because there's so much going on and it's kind of mesmerizing looking at the, all the details. If you prefer the extra protection, pick up one of their grip cases. They are literally the grippiest cases I've ever used and they're heavy duty so you'll never worry about accidentally breaking your phone if it slips out of your hand. Plus, you can still customize the back of it with whatever skin texture you'd like. If you'd like to check out their skins, go to dbrand.com slash howtomen. That's dbrand.com slash howtomen. The phone's display was another feature that really impressed me when watching a movie, playing games, or using the phone for long periods. That massive screen was perfect. To give you a perspective, it's a bit bigger than the OnePlus 8T, the same size as the iPhone 12 Pro Max, and slightly smaller than the Galaxy S21 Ultra. The small hole punch for the front camera was never really intrusive, and I also had no problem using the phone when I was out in the bright sun. At 1300 nits, this screen can get brighter than the iPhone 12 Pro Max, but falls a bit short when compared to the Galaxy S21 Ultra. Still, for the summer, this phone will be perfect. The best part is that the phone still supports Quad HD resolution at a refresh rate of 120 hertz. So scrolling through apps, seeing animations, or opening anything is buttery smooth. By the way, the smaller OnePlus 9 also supports 120 hertz, but has a resolution of 1080p. The 9 Pro also has a new type of screen that supports an LTPO backplane, which basically means that the display uses less power and that the refresh rate is adaptive. So if you're looking at photos or reading text, the refresh rate can drop as low as one hertz. Or if you're watching a movie, it can lower it to 24 hertz. It's a great way to save battery, but the amount of battery it's actually saving is probably not that much, unless you're constantly watching YouTube videos or TikTok videos. The only thing I didn't like about the display is that the edges are slightly curved. They're not extremely drastic, but it's still possible to get accent to palm touches, especially when you're not rocking a case. If OnePlus would have stuck with the same flat display found on the OnePlus Nord or even the OnePlus 8T, for me, that would have been perfect. Still, it's not the end of the world, and I know some people like the curved display, so I can see why OnePlus chose to go with that this year. Performance-wise, the OnePlus 9 Pro crushed it. Even though it's not that much faster than its predecessor, it's still faster. I personally never had a problem launching apps, multitasking, navigating the interface, unlocking the phone with any biometric unlocking method, or playing any heavy 3D graphic games. It even feels slightly faster than the $1,200 Galaxy S21 Ultra. Everything is buttery smooth, but I can't say that I didn't expect that from a OnePlus flagship. It does have a starting price of close to $1,000 after all. So with any phone in this price range, I'd expect it to have the latest Qualcomm chipset, 8 to 12 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM, UFS 3.1, and millimeter wave 5G support. And it does have all those features, but there's just one serious caveat. If you're on AT&T's network, you won't be able to use 5G, just LTE. Only T-Mobile and Verizon users can enjoy those 5G speeds on the OnePlus 9, so definitely keep that in mind if you're an AT&T customer. And even though the phone is extremely fast, it can overheat much more quickly than other phones I've used in the past. Some users have even experienced overheating to the point where it's unable to take photos. 
I personally never had this happen, so it could vary between units or the type of apps you're running in the background. Luckily, OnePlus pushed out an update to fix this issue, but I'm not 100% sure if people are still experiencing this. Now, speaking of updates, Oxygen OS has a below average update commitment. The company only promises to provide just two OS version updates and three years of security patches delivered every other month. It may not seem that bad, but for a phone that costs nearly $1,000, I'd expect more years. Smartphones from Google or Samsung promise at least three OS updates and monthly security patches. There are even a lot of Samsung phones promising four years of security patches. And let's not even talk about Apple's update commitment that usually lasts for at least five years. I definitely would have liked to see OnePlus push for at least three years of updates. Either way, I'm still a huge fan of Oxygen OS. Some people will say that it's not what it used to be, but it is still one of my favorite software choices. OnePlus does an excellent job of making its UI look minimal, easy to use, and still provides powerful exclusive features. Things like a launcher that is much more customizable than other stock OEM launchers. They have a customizable ambient display with some unique looking clock faces. You can even have an outline of a person's face if you set them as your wallpaper and enable canvas. Their gaming mode is compelling since it automatically focuses all of the performance entirely towards gameplay and even allows you to block every notification and phone call. To top it off, OnePlus has even reduced the touch latency on the 9 Pro's display to make the gaming controls much more responsive and help give you better reaction times. It kind of feels like cheating in a way. You can even have screen off gestures to control your music or open apps by drawing specific letters. And I love that you can control the type of icons that pop up on the status bar so it doesn't get overfilled with useless icons such as Vo LTE, headset, or NFC. I'm also so glad that OnePlus is turning to more Google apps. The stock launcher already includes the Google Discover panel. The default SMS and call apps are also both Googles. And they even stopped creating duplicate features that Google already implemented natively within the Android OS, such as removing File Dash from their OnePlus File Manager since Nearby Share is a thing now. It may seem like I had a grand old time using Oxygen OS, but it wasn't all butterfly and rainbows. It could be that the phone just got released, but I experienced a ton of software bugs. Some of the more annoying ones include the background sync, which had a huge issue that prevents certain notifications such as Gmail not showing up at all until you open the app. I sometimes couldn't hear a person's voice on the other side of a phone call no matter if the call was incoming or outgoing. I would need to restart the phone to fix that. Sometimes I even missed calls with full bars because the phone just never rang. And finally, the camera would randomly open if the phone was in my pocket. Sure, these are things that can be fixed with a simple update, but I still wanted to point them out because if you get the phone early on, there's a good chance that you could experience them. What was also pretty bad at first was the battery life. The phone would usually die around the evening and I didn't even use it that heavily. With every phone that I use, I usually just send messages, respond to emails, um, go on social media for a bit, listen to music, and occasionally use Google Maps. Typical stuff. And with this type of phone usage, the OnePlus 9 Pro would give me a screen on time of around four hours. Thank goodness that an update had arrived to improve the battery life a few weeks later though, cause I was over it. Now I usually see an average screen on time of around five and a half hours. It's not amazing, but a lot better than before. It's on par with the OnePlus 8T. And I guess OnePlus is probably just expecting you to use their super powerful fast charging method called Warp Charge 65T. I mean, the advertising is true. The giant brick that comes in the box can charge at a speed of 65 watts, so that literally means you can fully juice up this phone in just under 30 minutes. It's insane. But maybe that doesn't impress you because there are other smartphone companies out there that provide even faster charging speeds. What thoroughly impressed me was their new fast wireless charging technology with the phone having two separate battery cells, OnePlus created a new fast wireless charging stand called Warp Charge 50. It allows you to juice up the phone in just under 45 minutes. I've never seen a wireless charging pad charging phone at this speed. The stand also looks nice and has a USB-C port this time around. The only string attached is that you need to purchase it separately and it's not cheap at all. It's $70. <laughs> Finally, the 9 Pro also has reverse wireless charging, but if you get the morning mist variant, anything you do charge on the back can easily slip off unless you get a case or a skin. And let's be honest, with how slow it charges, how often would you use that? So let's wrap it up. The OnePlus 9 Pro has a starting price of $969, which comes with eight gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage. Upgrading it would bring the price up by hundred bucks, providing you with 12 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. It may not be as expensive as some of its top tier competitors, but it's still pricey nonetheless. So with that in mind, after using the 9 Pro for over a month now, 
Would I recommend that you purchase it? Honestly, I don't think I would. Don't get me wrong, it's a fantastic phone that will provide you with a great experience if you do get it, but you won't get the best bang for your buck. You can easily purchase a smaller OnePlus 9 for $240 less and obtain a very similar experience. The only difference is that the 9 Pro comes with fast wireless charging if you choose to get the extra $70 charging dock. The regular OnePlus 9 still comes with regular wireless charging. The 9 Pro has OIS and a telephoto lens, but you'd honestly receive the same picture quality on the regular OnePlus 9. Millimeter wave with 5G only if you have T-Mobile or Verizon, but you still get 5G support on the OnePlus 9. Water resistance, although you can also get water resistance on the regular OnePlus 9 if you get the T-Mobile version. And a slightly bigger display with better resolution, which can make it harder to use with one hand. On top of that, the OnePlus 9 Pro comes with a severe amount of software bugs and a below average software update commitment. The only way I could see someone purchasing the OnePlus 9 Pro is if they're committed to OnePlus devices and just want the best that OnePlus offers. The 9 Pro is also only perfect in the right aspects, aka not being on AT&T's network for 5G support, willing to upgrade in at least two years so that you can obtain the latest Android OS update, and even willing to drop an extra 70 bucks so that you can experience the new fast wireless charging technology. Other than that, it's a tough sell. It's way easier to recommend the smaller OnePlus 9 since it's the same device with only a few minor cuts, and I promise you won't be saying to yourself, why didn't I just get the more expensive OnePlus 9 Pro? Either way, that's my review of the OnePlus 9 Pro after a month of using it. If you guys enjoyed this review, please do me a favor and drop a thumbs up. If you really enjoyed it, why not also get subscribed with the notification bell turned on? We release Android videos just like this every week, and I promise you the quality of each content is always great. Don't forget to check out those dbrand skins or grip cases by going to dbrand.com slash howtomen, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Kapow!